Hey guys, it's Christy, and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to be creating five different looks with the new Pat McGrath Mothership 11 Sunlit Seduction Palette. So before we get into it, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy, and let's get into it. All right, so I recently uploaded a full review on this palette. I will leave it linked down below if you didn't catch that, but I really wanted to come back and film five different looks to see what this palette can do, what kind of different looks I can create. I just really wanted to see how far we can go with this very pinky toned palette. I love it, but I really just want to see what different things we can do with it. So let's just hop right into it. I will be doing a different look on each eye, then I'll do it again, and then I'll kind of settle on one. So I think I am going to start the very first look with Sienna Mystique and this is going to be my crease shade for the first look. These mattes are very very pigmented as always but I love the way that they blend out. I love how a little bit does so much. Okay I'm just going to grab a smaller brush and I'm going to go into Extreme Vermilion Dusk. This is one that I really didn't touch in my initial review because I thought it was going to be way too deep and pigmented, which it is. This one will really give you that depth if that's what you're looking for. This is a palette where I do think you can create some much lighter looks if you want to. I mean, I've done it. Yesterday I created a look where I had only two shades in this palette and I really, really liked it. It was very, very simple, very light, very soft but her mattes do tend to pack a bit of a punch. So if you like much, much softer makeup, not overly pigmented makeup, I'd probably skip on Pat McGrath's Motherships. See, this is already a little bit too dark and smoky for my taste, but at the same time, that blend is fabulous. I think I want just a teeny tiny bit more of Sienna Mystique, just in a little bit further. And I am dying to try Astral Amethyst Allure. I tried all of the others in my initial review, but I did not try this one. So I'm gonna take a little bit of that one on a finger and I'm going to pop it on the center of the lid to see how I like it. It really is the only purple in this palette, but it's not the most purpley purple, uh, if that makes sense. Let me grab this brush. I want to go back in and kind of redefine that outer corner a little bit. I'm going to add a little tiny bit more of Extreme Vermilion Dusk and I am getting a lot of fallout as I typically do. All right, I think I want to brighten it up a little bit and so I'm going to take a little bit of Astral Pink Fetish. This is probably my favorite shade in the whole palette and I'm going to take this one on the inner corner and bring it up. I just feel like the pink works so well with the purple and it just breathes a little bit of life back into the look. Okay, from there, I'm just gonna take Skin Tense Radiance on the inner corner. This is just such a perfect inner corner shade, but I did use it all over the lid yesterday and I really loved it. Mm. Okay, so this look ended up using a lot more of the pink. I don't think that purple is my favorite purple I've ever used. I think it's just got this undertone to it that I don't think I really like that much. Like it's pretty on swatch, but to me it almost seems on the lid like it kind of went a little brown leaning. Like on a finger and on swatch, it looks really pretty and very purple, but it just seems to me that this ends up looking somewhat brown on the lid and I feel like it loses a lot of its life. So. Anyway, not, not my favorite color in the palette. Let's move on to the other side. So I think on the other side, I do want to use more of these smoky browns. I kind of want to see what they can do. So let's go in to Nude Rose, just a tiny bit, just to sort of shape the crease a little bit, but not to do much more than that. Going in to Sienna Mystique. If you are somebody who doesn't love super, super pigmented eyeshadows and you have this, I would recommend tapping off your brush, but just doing a very light dip. And then you can always tap some of it off onto your hand. That is a little trick I like to use sometimes as well. But the way this does blend out, it's just so perfect. All right, back into Extreme Vermilion Dusk right here. Same thing as the other side, just building the outer corner. 
I am switching primarily between the BK Beauty 202 brush and the Sigma and Brianna Fox Fox 2. These are my two favorite eyeshadow brushes in my whole collection. This one I like for that more detail outer corner work. The 202 is my favorite for blending. So I think I'm going to take Copper Dawn as my primary lid shade. I'm going to bring this in here. That's really pretty actually. Okay, I'm just going to grab my 202. I'm just kind of blend around those edges. I got a little bit messy. Okay, and then I'm just going to take a little bit of Hypnotic Bronze and I'm going to use that to blend Copper Dawn into the matte shades. All right, and just adding a little bit of Skin Tense Radiance right here. So you could absolutely stop here and just have like a coppery bronzy look, which I think is really, really pretty. But for the purposes of this video, I just have to take a little bit of Astral Gilded Aura just because I love how the shade looks. I think it's so pretty and I'm just gonna leave it on the inner third of the eye. I'm not gonna bring it out too, too far just on that inner portion and I think it gives such a pretty little amount of life to the look. So I think that's quite pretty. Okay, let me pop off camera. I'll pop on some mascara and I'll come back to show you how, how these look with mascara and then we'll get into looks three and four. All right, so here are these two looks with mascara. So as you can see, this one is more purple based. It is, it's okay. It's kind of pretty. I really do think it needed the pink to really pull it together. Over here, we have a more bronzy, smoky eye kind of situation going on. I definitely could have gone in with a little bit more depth, but I didn't want to. Um, but I just find that too much depth looks too harsh on my skin tone, quite honestly. I do think the the Gilded Aura shade really did kind of pull together the look and just gave it a little something extra. Let's get into looks three and four. For look number three, I think I'm going to go with a more halo eye kind of situation. So I am going to take Nude Rose and this is going to go in the outer corner and also on the inner corner. Okay, I'm gonna keep building that with Sienna Mystique, again on the outer corner and the inner corner. And for this look, I think I'm going to try to use Blitz Crimson, which is the shade in the palette that I really don't love that much. I'm just using a smaller brush to do that inner corner, just so I can be a bit more precise. This is the BK Beauty A504. Now that's done. I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of Extreme Vermilion Dusk. I don't want to. I don't want this to be too too deep, but I do think we need a little bit of depth given that I am going in with that crimson shade. I do not like reds on my eyes, so I do want to create a good base for this one. And given that these browns have like an undertone, kind of like a reddish undertone, I think this will be. A good idea. I'm just going back into that crease brush just so I can blend. Now I'm going to go in with a finger and grab that Blitz Crimson shade. This one really works better by swiping rather than patting. I can see as well creating some more holiday-esque looks with this particular shade. I do think this would be really really pretty for that. Yeah, this shade is just giving me the absolute most fallout. And I did drag it out too far on the outer corner, so I'm just gonna go in with my blending brush just to kind of blend some of that away. I don't like this at all. So I'm gonna take a little bit of Astral Pink Fetish and I'm going to pop that one right on the center. Just to brighten things up. Okay, I really don't enjoy this look. I like I've mentioned, I don't like reds on my eyes. I think the way that I used this crimson shade in my initial review video is probably the only way that I would do that. And with that, I used the two mattes. I put this astral pink all over the lid and then I used this one to mesh into these two. And I think that is the only way I would use this shade in the future. I just don't like it. I don't like the way it applies. It's too chunky. 
In my initial review, I compared it to the Ulta Lustrous Foil Shades, and in some ways it is similar, but I find at the end of the day, it doesn't have the shine that those do. So the shade just isn't a favorite of mine. Let's get in to look number four. So I think because we did a halo on this side, I'm gonna do one on this side as well. And I am gonna start with Sienna Mystique. So again, blending into the outer corner and up into the crease, but not going all the way across. I'm starting to feel like the looks that I'm creating with this palette are a bit limited. I feel like I'm either going to get something that is kind of like a brownish tone or something that is pinky, but given that I hate the crimson shade and I'm not huge on the amethyst, I feel like I'm even more limited. So I don't know. I'm still glad I got this palette. I'm having a good time playing with it, but I just wanted to mention that I'm definitely feeling a bit limited and I'm feeling sort of like I don't know what I want to do next. Now I'm going to go into Extreme Vermilion Dusk again. Same thing, just lightly blending this one. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit of Skin Tense Radiance again, just to the inner corner. And then I'm going to go into Astral Gilded Aura. I want that to be the focus on this side. Yeah, I think this shade is so pretty. Okay, that's really pretty. I am gonna grab a little bit of Hypnotic Bronze though, just to kind of marry the Gilded Aura into the mattes. I know this is definitely on the more basic side, but this is probably one of the, one of my favorite looks I've created with the palette so far. Okay, that's really pretty. I actually love that. So let me pop off camera. I'll pop on some mascara. I'll be right back to show you the final looks and then we will get into the final look. All right, so here is looks three and four. So look three, I don't like it all. <laughs> I don't like it at all. I knew I wouldn't love the crimson shade on my eyes. I've never been a fan of reds, but I think with the right color scheme, you can make it work. I just don't like it on me and I don't like this shade in particular. It feels very creamy, but it is a much chunkier glitter. And I just found it was not that easy to work with. I couldn't get a brush that worked well with it. And then my fingers were the best option and I didn't even like how that applied. So I'm just not a fan of this shade at all. I did like it a little bit more once I added the Astro Pink Fetish right in the middle just to give that extra spotlight effect, but it's still not a favorite. Coming over to this eye, of course I like it. It is a neutral halo eye, but it's just so pretty. I think with that Gilded Aura shade right in the middle, I think it's so, so pretty. I like how this one turned out. I like the way the colors work together. Could I get this look in a bunch of other palettes I have? Yes. So again, not the most unique looks, but this is what I'm getting when I'm looking at the palette. I am definitely struggling to come up with creative looks to put together. So let me take this off I and then we will get into the final look. All right, let's get into the final look and I'm really not gonna go too crazy with this one. I'm gonna start once again with Nude Rose. I think it's fair to say that in a 10 pan palette that only has three mattes, you're probably going to start the looks the exact same every every single time. So that really doesn't bother me. I will say there are definitely some shades in this palette that are gonna get a lot more use than some others. I think in any larger palette, there are going to be shades often enough that where I'm not going to like every single one and I think that's okay. This final look I'm creating is the one I'm gonna be wearing for the rest of the day. So I do want this one to look really, really pretty. Not that the others weren't, but they were pushing me into my comfort zone a little bit, except for number four, which was the brown halo eye. That's definitely something I would wear. All right, from there, I'm just gonna grab a little bit of Extreme Vermilion Dusk. It's going to be my outer corner. And I'm holding this to be too, too pigmented. I want a little bit of the depth, but not too, too much. I think I want to add just a teensy, tiny bit more depth to that outer corner. Okay, now I'm going to go into Astral Pink Fetish. I think this is my very favorite shade in the palette. Gilded Aura is pretty close to being a favorite as well, but I think this one is the favorite. I love this shade. 
and this does have such a pretty 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 reflect to it I think I might take a tiny bit of the amethyst just a little bit to kind of tie the pink into those mattes yeah I think that's nice I think that might be the way that I use this purple shade okay just grabbing my blender just to blend around those edges on both eyes and dusting away the fallout. I got more on this side than the other. And then just taking a little bit of Skin Tense Radiance for the inner corner. All right, let me pop off camera. I will pop on some mascara and then I'll be right back to share my final thought. All right, so here is the final look and I actually really like this one. I think I finally figured out how I'll be using that amethyst shade, which makes me really happy. But let's get into my final thoughts on the palette. So I do already have a full review, like I mentioned, but after creating five different looks, in addition to the two I created in that video, I really don't think there's much range with this palette. I found that I was having a hard time figuring out different looks to create that I hadn't done already. I find that you're either going to end up with something kind of brown or you're going to end up with something pink, which is fine if that's what you like, but just know that that is kind of the range in here. I do agree with a lot of the comments I got on my initial review videos sharing that this is definitely great as a standalone palette, but if you have a bunch of other Pat McGrath palettes, you definitely don't need it. I totally agree with that. I also mentioned in that video that this reminds me a lot of the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2 palette. I stand by that. I do think the quality of this palette is gorgeous. There's no denying that. I love this color story. It's just not unique and it's not going to give you a ton of range. If you're somebody who only sticks to pinky brown eye looks, then you might really enjoy this. I do think the mattes are very pigmented, but they are very blendable. They're so easy to work with. I love working with her mattes. There is one of these shades in every single one of her palettes. I personally like that for that inner corner highlight. I just enjoy it. These four shades at the very end here. This is typically where she would have included those baked Blitz Astral shades that she had in some of her former palettes. And on looking through her collection, she hasn't had those in obviously this palette, last year's Moonlit Seduction, or Utopian Dream, which was something I don't think I fully realized when I did my initial review, but that is a very good point. If that special baked formula is part of what drives this price point up and there's none in these palettes, then I do think her price point could be a little bit less. I think these are beautiful shades. I think this one and this one end up having a bit of a duochrome property to them, which makes them very, very pretty. They are very much elevated metallics, but what they remind me of is the sparkling foil shadows in the newer Natasha Denona palettes. That's a newer formula to her. And all it is is a really amped up metallic. So the thing that I found that is special with the Blitz Astrals in the baked format is that they give that shine and dimension and sparkle while also being a very, very smooth and never enhancing texture, things like that. And they are beautiful. It doesn't necessarily bother me, but I know it probably bothers a lot of people not having those shades in these palettes anymore. So that's something to take into account as well. If that is important to you, I would definitely go with one of her earlier palettes. Like I mentioned, I think this is a beautiful, beautiful palette. I love the color story. I think it's fun to play with and work with, especially if you're going for those very sparkly looks. This shade, I don't know if I'll use it all. I just don't like it. It's too chunky. Even when I do my little trick of rubbing my fingers together first, I just still don't love it. I just can't make myself love a crimson shade on my lids. And that's, that'll never change. Overall, I think it's very, very beautiful. And I think it's really going to cater to somebody who doesn't have a ton of Pat McGrath in their collection and who really loves brownie neutral eye looks. I think that will be perfect. If you have a very fair skin tone, you can still make these mattes work. I have a very fair skin tone, but my way of making them work is to just apply very, very lightly, hold the brush at the end rather than up close so that it goes on really lightly and you can just blend and kind of blow out that look if you want to. And that's just what works for me. However, we do get quite a bit of depth in here, which I also really like. I think it's beautiful. I think the quality's great. I still love the packaging. I think the packaging leads to a luxurious experience when using this. 
I still think the price tag is high, especially if we're not actually getting those special shades. And like we saw today, there really isn't a ton of range. I was struggling to come up with different looks to create with this palette. And I would also say to definitely wait for a sale because I don't think it's so special that you need to spend $128 on it, especially if you can get it for 30% off. Again, I just think it's really, really pretty and I'm enjoying it personally, but I hope this video was helpful. Let me know down below which of my looks you liked best. For me, it was definitely four and five, but I hope this video was helpful. If you like the series going forward, I can definitely try to keep doing these types of videos when I review new palettes, but that is it for me today. Thank you so very much for watching. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload at least three new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!